Hey, love bugs, it's Roslyn back at you one more again. I hope everybody's doing blessed and doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome into my returning subs, my growing extended beautiful family. Just thank you so much for the love and support. Being able to know that, you know, you can resonate with my videos and knowing that you can, I mean, you truly relate to the things that I, you know, I go through on a daily basis is really a blessing to me. So thank you for being in my life as I am in yours. So with that being say, said, namaste, love and blessings, love and light, and many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please like and subscribe. Even hit that notification bell so you know when your girl's about to upload an next video. If you are comfortable enough, please drop me a line or two. I love a chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. Even if it's about the positive feedback of the content of my video, or you're just up telling me about your impact, the gift, and how it impacted your life and head you towards a positive direction. Also, if you are getting good information or even good vibes from the videos and you would love to share with a loved one, family, or friend, or even a fellow empath or, you know, that's going through some really trying times right now and, you know, they need confirmation or validation towards their life path or even their soul purpose, please go ahead and share. And while you're at it, give me a thumbs up. Like it. Also, share on your social media favorites wherever you see fit. Thank you so much for the love and support. It's so greatly appreciated. And I hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video. And today... Um, my uh, meditation music that I'm listening to is called Aura Cleanse with Love Seven Chakra Meditation. Uh, sail, sail with positive energy, calm whale. And I will go ahead and post that link in the description box below. And my video today is Twin Flame 101. Hey, Okas, you will soon tell your story of trials you healed from, so it will be someone else's survival guide. And it's truly true. You know, um, I said it's truly true. It's really true. Um, being able to do this, it, I mean, it took a lot for me to do. You know, I was at the beginning, almost close to three years ago. I can't believe I've been doing this for almost three years. Uh, being able to open up and tell people about, you know, my dad being Prince and, you know, how I really would do things growing up. It's like been a really eye-opening experience. I've had bad experiences. I also had good ones. And it's just like it allowed me to be able to see things for what they truly are. Being able to see people at a broad expect, you know, perspective. Really, you know, not mad at, you know, even when I had really bad situations, I'm blessed for those because there were experiences. You always learn from the things that you go through. You know, it took me a lot to be able to deal with this. You know, it really changed my life and a total, <laughs> I don't know what the word I want to say. But it was an eye-opening experience, basically. Um, being able to grow up knowing that, you know, my mom really truly wanted me to know about my dad. She wanted me to interact with my my dad. You know, she wanted me to be able to, you know, know my biological family, even though my adopted father, you know, stopped her from doing that. She didn't want to allow my dad to be in my life, but he had no problem taking the money. You know, so it was just like going through all those different things and knowing I was basically used as a pawn uh, in my family for them to be able to live comfortable, you know. And it, it was a bad situation where, you know, my dad was really tortured um, by, you know, he did what he had to do. He sent the money, you know, and they would still, like, not let him see me. He never knew what I looked like growing up. And it was just like being able to deal with all those different things in my life. I thought I was going to lose my mind, you know, it's just like things that I knew I went through, you know, my adoptive father tried to sit up here and say that I was obsessed with him. It was like me being a fan and, you know, I shouldn't, you know, I wanted to dance like him. I sang like him, I wanted to play the piano, guitar, drums and all this stuff. I had, you know, all those different things growing up and, you know, it was just like having to deal with that. He's like, you know, you should never be like that boy. My mom was like, you can't fault her because she's just like him you can't do that you know that's her dad you know she's the the daddy's girl and I always assumed I was the daddy's girl for my adopted father but not knowing my mom like no you act just like your dad <laughs> you know you act just like him and she was very intrigued by that you know I, even though me and my mom had a really bad oil and water relationship it's like towards the end it was very you know sad uh being able to lose my mom from an aneurysm brain aneurysm tumors fluid on her heart, body cancer, you know, everything is just seemed like my mom had almost every freaking disease 
you know, <laughs> death disease, you know, that she can possibly have. And being able to take care of her the way I did, uh, it was hard, you know, to be able to do that because I was like 24 or 25 years old when my mom passed away. And being able to deal with all those different things and, you know, it, it was just life. You know, it was just like being able to have to deal with that all on my own, you know, until my mom's family was able to come through and all that stuff. But, you know, going through life and actually really looking at uh, all the things I endured, you know, I when I sat up here and saw this situation and I thought, you know, dealing with my mom's death was something that I knew I would never get over. You know, and I always used to tell my adopted father, you know, my worst fear is knowing that I knew one of my my parents and never had a chance to, you know, meet them. You know, that would be my, my worst fear. And he and what made it so, it, it was like upsetting to me. He had his nerve to ask me what my worst fear was. And he made sure he followed through with that. And it was like after my, my doc, you know, my father had passed away, um, being able to have all those suppressing memories come back all the time, it, it was sent me into a mental case. You know, losing your, your parent is 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 very hard. You know, if you ever lost a parent and all those things, you, you know, it wasn't something that was easy to get through. You know, even though you know people die and they live all the time, that's the circle of life. But being able to know I've seen my dad all the time and I always used to wonder why I cry when I see him or I get really excited and I get emotional. You know, my mom was like, how do you feel when you see him? It's like my mom used to get intrigued by that, you know, because there's things she really wanted to tell me. But it's like my dad threatened her life as well. You know, if you tell her this and this and that, you know, that was something she had really lived with. So it was like all these things that came about and me starting to do my video diaries and say, you know what, maybe if I come out and you know, tell people, maybe my mom will catch this video and then we can meet. But it's like my mom and my dad had an oil and water relationship as well. You know, with them being teenagers, my mom was 16, my dad was 18. You know, they didn't really know anything about kids. So it was like my mom, it, it was like I was a, a thorn in her side for her being pregnant and stuff like that. So it was like I wasn't able to deal with my mom. You know, my mom never wanted to meet me because it was a bad situation between her and my father. So from what I was told, you know, they used to argue all the time. You know, I guess she he held fault at her for him not to be able to see. It was like, if you never gave her up, I wouldn't be going through this and this and this and that. And it was really hard, you know, because I really feel like that was not her fault. You know, she was 16. Her parents is the only one who can, you know, make that decision for her. You know, they... They're the one who real, you know, took care of her. So, I mean, it's just the fact is I was never mad at her. I was never mad at him for anything that I went through. Uh, I'm not even mad at the people that did the things to me. Even though it was a hard, heartbreaking thing to deal with, knowing that was how I grew up. You know, it took me a long time to have to be able to forgive the people that did that to me. I never thought I was going to be able to get over the fact is that my adopted dad did that. It's just like, you adopted me. How can you do that? I mean, you could have sent me back, but it's just the fact is you couldn't stand my dad, but you had no problem with asking him for things, you know, to make sure I was taken care of. But I struggled my whole life. Me and my mom both struggled our whole lives. You know, my dad wanted us to go stay with him back when he first made Paisley Park. You know, he, he just like, y'all can come stay rent free. You know, um, you don't have to pay anything. I just want to be able to see my daughter. My adopted father was like, hell no. You, she's not going to have all the women around my daughter and having her see these things and this and this and that. My mom was like, you know, he he is doing everything he can to possibly see his daughter. You think he would endanger her or have her being able to see things she's not supposed to see? He's like, I don't think he would do that. And he was like, I don't care. I'm not going to, you know, give that a chance for that to happen. So it was just like all these different things I had to remember that I suppressed for so long. All these things went about. And being able to make these videos on YouTube, knowing that I was worried about how people if anybody would believe me how would people take me what would they think you know all these different things had went on in my life and I just didn't know how people were going to take it and it was just like I've had crazy experiences where people would freak out when they see me like oh gosh you act just like your dad you look just like your dad um all those different things or people were kind of harsh towards me sent me death threats all these different things and I would feel like you know maybe if I came out with it how people love my dad my 
my dad loved me just the same. It wasn't always, you know, it didn't turn out like I wanted it to, but everything has a reason for happening. And it's just the fact is when everything was all said and done, I've been going through this for three years. But basically, if I think about everything I went through, I've been going through this my whole life. But it got really hard after my dad died. It was just like being able to have dreams two years before he passed. I kept on always waking up in this sweat, screaming, yelling up for my dad. And, you know, my fingers would be bleeding. I don't know how my fingers would be bleeding, feeling, gum, you know, blood in my mouth and stuff like that. I'm trying to pry open the elevator doors and assuming it was my adopted father. But it was my real dad that was dying. I kept running. If you ever have one of those dreams, like you're running towards something, and it's like even the closer you get, it seems like it still got farther, farther and farther away. So that was something I had to go through. And I'm like, why am I having these dreams? Why are they occurring like that? And, you know, why do I keep having blood in my mouth and all these different things? And then next, you know, not even a year passed after my father died, they're putting his pictures of him in the elevator, which was something... I was like, I was not preparing myself to even think somebody would have death photos of my dad. And then you're able to see him all over the internet. People kept showing people that claimed that they love my dad. They kept, you know, putting that out for display. And I'm just like, can my dad rest in peace? You know, it's already sad enough it is. Nobody's held responsible for my dad. You know, nobody's, that was my main concern. Who did this to him? Why would they do this to him? You know, why would this happen? You know, there there's so many questions that I never got closure from. But I just have to say, I have to keep telling myself all the time that there's a reason behind the things that happen. Um, even though there would be one day I'll finally get the answers to know who would do this to him. And why would they take pictures and exploit him like that? You know, it, it was a really heartfelt, hurtful thing for anybody to have to go through. Especially, you know, that having to be your child and this is the only time. You get a chance to see your dad is he's dead and I, I was hurt I was really hurt and trying to heal from that you know I was just like haven't I been through enough you know it's just you're not understanding why things had to happen this way it's like my dad loved a lot of people you know yes people are not perfect things do happen but it was just like nobody really cared about what happened to him. It was always about money. And that broke my heart. I just wanted to know what happened to my dad. But going through this, you know, it has been, it's been a blessing. It has been. You know, even though there's a lot of things that's still up in the air, not knowing nobody's held responsible for you know his death it you know because i felt i i carried that guilt like if i would have went home you know even when he came down here he was trying to come see me the night he was went to the the fox theater in atlanta you know he came to visit me but there was stuff going on at my my, my mom's ex-husband's in them house you know they they were kept on telling me they had surprises for me those are not type of people that ever had surprises for me. You know, seeing out all those limousines and stuff out there, I didn't know if they were trying to hurt me or, you know, I knew they were into the Illuminati type stuff, so I didn't want to go over there. You know, I didn't know what that twin, twin flame feeling was, but it got me really nervous and I didn't know why I felt that way, so I chose not to go. And then when I'm putting two and two together, and then I went over there two days after the, the concert, and I talked to him and he sounded really sick. And I didn't understand who it was. You know, my adopted mom, I mean, not my adopted mom, but my my mom's ex-husband's wife told me it was one of her patients on the phone and for me to talk to him. You know, she's like, he's really sick and he just needs somebody to cheer him up. And I'm like, you never asked me to do that. And it's on speaker. Why can I see who I'm on the phone with? And she wouldn't allow me to do that. And it was just like, I didn't put two and two together because when I hear, you know, people he was just singing in a concert like two days ago two three days ago whatever and now I'm hearing him on the phone it's like he was had one foot on the earth one foot on the spirit side and you know it was just like a weird feeling being able to talk to him and didn't know that was going to be my last time talking to him and you know it felt weird it felt really weird like you know why do I feel like I know this person you know, why did I have to do this? And then, you know, finding out he was here, you know, coming to see me, 
and then I was the last that was the last time I was able to talk to him and then this happens you know it was a lot to deal with and knowing that I can be able to use what I went through to help other people to let them know there are so many things that's been brought into your life that will break you down and you try to understand why you're going through the things you go through nobody deserves anything like this it's like when I see my situation I know what it feels like to be broken down in each and every way but knowing it's family that does this I never thought my family would be able to do this to me you know and it was just like they tried and tried so hard for me to be wiped out of this earth they didn't care you know if I my kids were supported or anything they didn't care about none of that uh, all they saw was dollar signs and it's like when I see my dad it just seems like that's all it is about him and I'm just like that's my dad this this shouldn't have happened you know why would this happen but just knowing there's some kind of peace that you can get even though I don't have closure I'm at peace I'm at peace. It's just like when I talk about my dad and knowing those different things happen, it breaks my heart to know. But I just keep hearing the universe saying, you know, we're working on doing things for you. You don't know the whole story. And I have to be at peace with that. But knowing they just kept telling me, push your story. Let your story be known. You know, you'll help other people with the things you have went through. And it just knowing that, I mean, that sends validations towards me because of the comments y'all dropped down to me, letting me know that even though you go through things, it has helped you. And it's just like, then when I always cry to the universe saying, why do I have to go through this? This hurts. It hurts. But knowing that my, my story will help other people ease their hearts to know that you, the strongest people go through the worst situations and sometimes you go through hell to be able to help other people and it's just like I don't wish nothing like this on anybody but knowing that I can you know I still talk to my dad every day you know every day I just hear him all the time whispering in my ear I'm proud of you look at how far you've gone you know you're helping a lot of people make sense to their crazy lives you know it's just like we don't like the world like he said you know <laughs> you got friends that feel the same way but just being able to know that I can help ease people's minds to know that your pain has a purpose but it's, it's going to bring you big blessings towards the end if you just keep fighting keep believing in yourself and know that everything will be okay you just have to be able to have that faith within yourself and knowing that your pain is far more bigger and, you know, it's just like your blessings are far more bigger than the pain that you're currently enduring. It, you have big blessings coming in for all the hell you've been put through. And it's just like, you will be okay. You just have to go through things for a little while, you know. And it's just, I know it might feel unfair. Trust me, I know. But being able to go through this and know that I've helped so many people with, you know, being able to be strong, you know. Don't worry about what people think of you. The right people will be around you that need to be there. You know, you'll have people supporting you. You're going to have people backlash you as well. When you're pushing out positivity, those are the things you need to expect. So it's just like you stay strong. You stay vigilant. You know, stay resilient. You know you're working towards yourself. Helping yourself heal as you're helping others as well. And knowing that one day... The story that you're going to tell about your survival, survival through all the pain and heartache, it's going to help somebody else through their prison of pain. So I hope you were able to resonate with this. Sorry, y'all did not mean to get emotional, but it's a beautiful situation when I know that I've came a long way. You know, when I can look at the people that have put me through this, knowing they're the reason why I never got a chance to see my father and just tell them, God bless you. I hope everything <laughs> goes okay for you, you know, and not want to put my hands on anybody like that. I feel like my day is coming, you know, my day is going to come, you know, I don't understand the things that had to go on, I don't understand why they did, but, you know, everything happens for a reason, 
so i hope this was able to resonate with you please drop me a line i appreciate y'all i love y'all from the bottom of my heart and i said i'm not doing no outro because i'm really trying not i'm trying to hold myself together so i will give y'all a post notification shout out my next video i love y'all peace be wild